Here are today's top stories. Former members of the Communist Party of the Philippines accuse the rebel group of abusing indigenous tribes and purging its members. Thousands of passengers are left stranded in ports as Tropical Depression Usman prepares to make landfall. The Philippines assures the safety of its visitors amid concerns over airport security. And the Ascals go to the AFC Asian Cup without goalkeeper Neil Etheridge. Good day, I'm Pia Rosas Morotol. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Former members of the Communist Party of the Philippines have expressed their condemnation of the terrorist group's alleged atrocities. Among them were the exploitation of indigenous peoples and the killing of their own comrades. Benj Bondok has a story. For the former LUMAD members of the New People's Army, the Communist Party of the Philippines' New People's Army destroyed what was once a peaceful region in Mindanao. In a documentary produced by Sambayanan, these former members revealed that killings became rampant since the time the CPP-NPA entered their area. Datu Manlig Onan Volando Lanapan, former LUMAD NPA leader in Agusan del Norte, admitted that they were easily lured by the doctrines of the CPP-NPA. So, nahitabo nga ni Abot ang CPP-NPA-NDF. So, gi-organize ang tribong Higaunon sa... Uh, NPA, busa kami mismo madali nga na doktrinahan o dali ni adapt sa sistema nga gipasabot sa CPP-NP. Dato de Vice Mandahinog, another former leader, said he experienced deceptions by the CPP-NPA when they took advantage of his grandfather's death. Nahon peaceful ang uh, tribong higaunon dres sa Karaga, dres sa Agusan del Norte. Nahinumdum ko sa una lang 1973, Gipatay ang akong apuhan kasi dato mga kalase senior. Gipatay sa kapitalistang gitawag ng narco na sipit number company. Pag kamatay sa akong apuhan, nagmagat ang tribo sa Tibok, Dres Agosa del Norte. Tapos pagkahuman ni Ana, ma'am, gisakyan sa rebuilding MPA. Dato Bawang Eddie Ampiawan also narrated how the CPP NPA manipulated the tribes. Uh, dala ang uh, tribo dahil sa uh, alok ng CPP in PINDF noon na tulungan ang tribo na makipaglaban sa NALCO. Yun pala, hindi yun ang totoong takay target ng CPP in PINDF. Kung hindi, ginagamit nila ang NALCO na maging kadahilanan para uh, ang tribo sumali sa kilos ang CPP-NPA-NDF. From abusing indigenous peoples, the CPP-NPA has reportedly committed mass murder among its members in the 1980s. Nung pamalit kay Sison, si Chamson, si Chamson, yan ang gumagawa ng, ng palisya na lahat ang mga tao pinag-imbestigahan uh, sa bawat uh, level ng, ng unit. Talagang tayo ka Former NPA Sandatahang Unit Propaganda member Chito Herbolingo said kangaroo courts were established against suspected traitors which resulted in about 1,000 deaths in Davao. Ito namang tinatawag sila na korte, uh, kangaroo. Pagpunta ka doon, parang ano na yun eh, parang tapos na yung desisyon. Formality na lang yung pagpunta mo doon. So in Davao alone, tinataya na mayroong mga more or less 1,000 ang pinagpapatay ng sarili mga kasamahan. The Department of Justice had asked the Philippine courts to arrest Benito and Wilma Tiamzon and other CPP-NPA consultants for multiple murder cases. The Tiamzon couple went into hiding when their bail for temporary liberty was cancelled. The DOJ also filed a pending motion in court to declare the CPP-NPA-NDF as a terrorist organization under the Human Security Act. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. 
Contrary to the CPP NPA's claims of continuous growth, the military says the rebels' numbers are dwindling with the surrender of thousands of its cadres this year. AFP Public Affairs Chief Noel de Toyato says over 11,000 members and supporters have surrendered to the military. On the other hand, about 120 were killed in military operations and nearly 200 were arrested. Government troops also seized over 2,000 assorted firearms and improvised explosive devices, while 310 camps were captured. AFP Chief of Staff Benjamin Madrigal earlier said the CPP NPA celebrated its 50th anniversary without any real achievements and its members fighting for a lost cause. More than 400,000 contractual employees have undergone regularization after President Rodrigo Duterte signed Executive Order 51, protecting security of tenure. Labor Secretary Sylvester Bello says 70% of the workers were regularized due to initiatives of their employers, while the rest were in compliance of the President's order. Bello also announced that the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines has expressed commitment to regularize all their employees. Aside from EO51, Bello also cited the launching of Overseas Filipino Bank, settlement of various claims of several laborers, and creation of over 800,000 jobs for Filipinos this year. Other achievements were the signing of an agreement with Kuwait for the protection of Filipino workers and the adjustment of the minimum wage. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security prepares media handbooks for students. Meanwhile, a mayor is being linked in the killing of Ako Bicol representative Rodel Batokabe. More on these and other news around the metro from Benj Bondok. The Presidential Task Force on Media Security plans to distribute its media handbook to journalism and mass communication students. Communications Under Secretary Joel Eco says they hope to teach these students the do's and don'ts in journalism as well as personal security measures. A second edition of the Media Security Handbook, which will be launched for students, is on the works. Meanwhile, the PNP is looking into the possible involvement of a mayor in the killing of Ako Bicol Party List Representative Rodel Batokabe in Daraga Albay. The Chief Oscar Albayalde says they are investigating a political motive and the New People's Army as angles in the case. They have identified six persons of interest who will be invited for questioning soon. The national government has released funding amounting to 16 billion pesos as tertiary education subsidy for needy and deserving students. The funding is released under the Duterte administration's Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act, now fully felt by millions of students in state schools. Beneficiaries in public universities get 40,000 pesos a year to be used for books, transportation, supplies, room and board fees, and other education-related expenses. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Bondo. Still to come, thousands of passengers are left stranded in ports as Tropical Depression Usman prepares to make landfall. Victims of a Christmas Day fire in Cebu City ask for food and water. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. December 13, Juemes, Las Piñas City. Pinanguna ni Pangulong Rodrigo Roa Duterte ang inaugurasyon ng Las Piñas Drug Rehabilitation Center. Inaasahan makatutulong ito sa mayigit dalawang daang drug-dependent patients. Pinasalamatan ng Pangulo si na former Senate President Manny Villar at asawang si Senator Cynthia Villar na nag-donate na nasabing rehab center. December 14, Piernes, Quezon City. Nagipagpulong ang Pangulo kay Iglesia Ni Cristo Executive Minister Eduardo Manalo na siya rin itinalaga bilang Special Envoy for Overseas Filipinos Concerns. Nagipagsayahan naman ang Pangulo sa kanyang staff ng Idaos ang Office of the President Christmas Party sa Malacanang. December 15, Sabado, Eastern Sama. Matapos ang higit isang daang taong paghihintay, ay sama-samang sinaksihan ng mga residente ng Balangiga at ni Pangulong Duterte ang makasaysayang pagbabalik ng Balangiga Bells. Today's gathering is indeed a time to be truly sentimental as we welcome back our Balangiga Bells 
the rest of the Filipino nation joins in the Diocese of Borongan in celebrating this historic event. The bells are returned, and it was really because of the fervent prayers of the entire Filipino nation. The credit goes to the American people and to the Filipino people, period. December 18, Martes, Davao City. Dumalo ang Pangulo sa Barangay Summit on Good Governance Region 11 at kinausap ang mga punong barangay. Ako po si Secretary Martin Antanar at ito ang Duterte on Duty. Abangan sa susunod na liko ang mga gagawin ng Pangulo. More than 15,000 passengers are stranded in different ports nationwide early Friday due to Tropical Depression Uzman. The Philippine Coast Guard says hundreds of sea craft were also stranded in Metro Manila, Central Luzon, Southern Tagalog, Bicol, Western, Eastern and Southern Visayas and Northern Mindanao. All vessels located in or headed for areas with public storm warning signal number one are barred from sailing. Weather Bureau Pagasa says Usman may intensify into a tropical storm prior to landfall over eastern Samar tonight. Moderate to heavy rains which may trigger flooding and landslides is expected over Visayas, Bicol Region, Mindoro Provinces, Marinduque, Romblon and Quezon. The Philippines remains safe for tourists as it addresses security concerns amid an advisory issued on the country's aviation security measures. The travel advisory from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security reminded passengers that the Ninoy Aquino International Airport does not carry out effective aviation security measures. While the government respects the advisory, the Department of Tourism assures that the Manila International Airport Authority, together with the Department of Transportation, have committed to positively address this concern. The DOT is in close coordination with the Philippine National Police and the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. It says both agencies have repeatedly assured their readiness to assess and respond to security threats. Police operatives from the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao have confiscated 28.3 million pesos worth of illegal drugs from January to November this year. Chief Superintendent Graciano Mijares, Director of Police Regional Office ARMM said, the total drug haul was the result of 400 police anti-drug operations throughout 2018. Over 500 drug suspects were arrested, with 32 of them getting killed while resisting authorities. A total of 834 drug-related cases were also filed in court. Mihara said the total confiscated drugs comprise 4,135 grams of shabu and 494 grams of marijuana. Meantime, over 200 suspects were arrested in the campaign against illegal gambling. Mihara sought the help of the public in their continuing campaign against gambling and illegal drugs. Children in Baguio City find a safer way to welcome the new year. Meanwhile, victims of a fire last Christmas in Cebu are in need of food and water. More on these stories from the provinces from Janice Cave. Children from Barangay Irisan, the biggest village in Baguio City, have received hornpipes or torotots from the Bureau of Fire Protection for the new year. This is part of the agency's Oplan Paalala, a campaign to urge the public not to use firecrackers in the traditional year-end noisemaking. The BFP urges everyone to stay safe this new year as it targets zero holiday injuries. In Cebu City, Councillor Dave Tumulak has appealed to owners of bake shops and water refilling stations to help the victims of the Christmas morning fire in Spolarium Street in Barangay Dulho, Fatima. A pickup vehicle of the Cebu City Disaster Risk Reduction Management Office is on standby to receive and consolidate donated relief items. The fire that hit four CTOs on December 25 left a 12-year-old boy dead. At least 430 houses were also destroyed. 
Meanwhile, authorities arrested an American citizen for stealing the luggage of two Korean nationals at the Clark International Airport. Julio Cesar Sanchez was positively identified through a CCTV footage. The suspect, who was arrested in a hotel in Angeles City, admitted to the crime, saying he did it because he disliked Koreans. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. Up next, the PNP repeats its warning against buying and using prohibited fireworks. The Askals go to the AFC Asian Cup without goalkeeper Neil Etheridge. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Magdiwang ng bagong taon na masaya at ligtas. Pakiisa sa Community Fireworks Display sa inyong lugar. The PNP reminds the public to refrain from buying and using restricted fireworks. This as PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde inspected firecracker stores in Bokawe, Bulacan this morning. The PNP says certain powerful firecrackers like baby rockets, small triangulo, and paper caps can be used only in designated firecracker zones. Smaller firecrackers like sparklers, whistle devices, and Roman candles may be lit outside the firecracker zones. The PNP also warned fireworks vendors not to sell prohibited firecrackers or else risk losing their permits. In our foreign news, the tsunami triggered by a landslide of Mount Krakatau in the Sunda Strait last Saturday has devastated two coastal villages in South Lampung, Lampung Province, Indonesia. Many houses and school buildings were reported destroyed or severely damaged in Kalyanda's coastal villages. Hundreds of boats, motorcycles and cars were swept away by sea waves. Rescue personnel as well as military and police officers have arrived to help evacuate the tsunami victims to safer places. The National Disaster Mitigation Agency says 430 people were reported dead in the tsunami while hundreds are injured and missing. The agency expects the number of casualties might increase as rescues reach remote coastal villages that might have been affected by the tsunami. In sports, goalkeeper Neil Etheridge will miss the Philippine Ascals' first ever appearance in the AFC Asian Cup next year. Etheridge is not listed in the 23-man roster submitted by the Philippine Football Federation for the tournament in the United Arab Emirates. Coach Sven Goran Eriksson is expected to make Bangkok United keeper Michael Falksgaard as the Ascals' primary goalkeeper. Kaya Iloilo's ace Villanueva and Horson's Kevin Hansen will join Fox Guard. Meanwhile, a bevy of Ceres Negros players make up the national team pool to the Asian Cup. Carly De Murga, Mike and Manny Ott, Kevin Ingreso, Stefan Schrock, Patrick Reichelt, Kurt Dizon, Paul Mulders, and newly signed Miguel Tanton will represent the reigning Philippine Premier League champion to the Ascals. More people are taking notice of Task Force Bangon Marawi's efforts to help displaced residents. This as Bangon Marawi led another caravan bringing government services to barangays in the city. Sweet Lukman has a story. The lead agency of Task Force Bangon Marawi for Information Management and Strategic Communication Support Group, Philippine Information Agency, together with member agencies AFP, DOH Region 10, TESDA, CHO Dental Services, DSWD, conducted Kumpas Barangay Servicio Caravan sa Marawi as part of TFBM Intervention for Marawi at Barangay Kabasaran, Marawi City. The activity aims to reach out the barangays where the victims of Marawi siege sought refuge and provide psychosocial intervention and other services. The said agencies provided services such as Libreng Gupit of AFP, 
and DOH-10 catered 173 patients with free checkup and medicines. Dental services were provided by the Marawi CHO to around 70 patients. Help desk for certain concerns of IDPs was provided by DSWD, while TESDA invited interested residents to register for free training the agency is offering. According to TESDA OIC Center Administrator Mario S. Labisig, Anybody can participate sa training, regardless IDP sila or hindi. Basta ang willingness lang nila na matuto kung ano yung training na gusto nila. Just in case may interesado na doon tayo sa center base, sa regional training center in Iligan, we also have dormitory for them. Kung uh, doon sila talaga mag-aral. So, sa lahat na interesado na mag Away lang free training. Wala kami ina inaayawan. So lahat na mag may gusto magpatuto for skills training, uh, just feel free to visit Regional Training Center Iligan. Hanapin lang ako. Ako yung OIC administrator ng RTC Iligan. Anybody ano, is welcome to participate or join the, the program sa TESDA. Meanwhile, the PIA ICCC team entertained the children of Barangay Kabasaran, Marawi City by bringing dancing mascots, Batman and Hello Kitty, and Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse. This is part of psychosocial intervention of TFBM for the children of Marawi. Moreover, school kits and snacks were also served. The desire of the people to receive information was clear as the monthly Bangon Marawi and information material from OPAP were also distributed. This was also apparent as the people requested for more enrollment forms for them to receive information through text messages. This is a partnership among UNCHR, UNOCHA, and PIA. Despite the rains that poured the whole day at the area, around 200 children joined the event while about 100 150 residents filled up the personal information consent authorization for them to receive information. For PNA Newsroom, Sweet Lukman, Philippine Information Agency. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Here's another look at today's top stories. Former members of the Communist Party of the Philippines accused the rebel group of abusing indigenous tribes and purging its members. Thousands of passengers are left stranded in ports as Tropical Depression Usman prepares to make landfall. The Philippines assures the safety of its visitors amid concerns over airport security. And the Ascals go to the AFC Asian Cup without goalkeeper Neil Etheridge. Thank you for watching another edition of the Pine Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the Pine website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And another weekend has come. Keep safe, everyone, before we welcome the new year. That's your daily dose of the latest news and information that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. I'm Pia Rosas Morato. Good day.